Felix, I'm free to. Okay, hi, I'm a friend of Paul. So, Paul, why are we here? <laughs> uh, thank you, Paco. Um, firstly, thank you to, to Joseph uh, for allowing us into the best photography shop in Hong Kong. Um, and also for, for everybody for turning up. Um, I love coming to, or I love going to photography presentations, not just to, uh, to see the photographer's photographs, but I'm, I'm often quite uh, interested in the person himself. So what I would like to convey today, or my story, is a little bit about myself and uh, the way I work. And in particular, tonight I will talk about Mongolia, mostly, although it won't always be about that. Okay, you said you want to talk about I'm yourself. So what is the most important thing to you? Um, for me, uh, personally, in my life, I think, given my history, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from Zimbabwe, originally. As a, as a white kid growing up there, I had quite, um, I think I could say, I was brought up as a, a, quite an elitist, or a lucky upbringing. That made me, I would say, a little bit racist. Okay. Uh, but I think, uh, I think I learned later in life that, and, and from traveling and from, from learning and experiencing, that I was able to be more myself. Um, I think something that is very important to me in my photography yeah. is I like to have a, a sense of purpose. Okay. And my my purpose is if I if I don't have a purpose or a reason to photograph, my photographs are, are not that good. So I think Mongolia working uh, for NGOs is, I have a reason to photograph. Can you tell us more about the Mongolian NGO? What are you doing with them? Uh, and how does that give you a purpose? The NGO in Mongolia is a, it's a children's charity. Okay. And they, um, they work, there's about 60 kids that okay. are there and it's for, for, for kids who come from very, very poor families. Okay. So the, it's usually the parents are alcoholic or, or something like that. Okay. And they cannot afford uh, food or to look after the kids. So the charity takes them in during the day and they get food and, and somewhere warm because Mongolia can be, can be freezing. Uh, winters are, are minus 40 and, and it's very, very polluted. So okay. Ulaanbaatar is the, the coldest capital city in the world. Wait, can and I dial back? Mm -hmm. What is your, how is your photography related to the NGO then? How, how, how is it going to be benefit to the NGO? Uh, I think it goes back to that word that I love, the uh, purpose. So okay. if I have a reason to photograph, yeah. it gives me um, a pressure or a reason to, to photograph. And it means, so for example, if I'm there uh, looking after or supporting the NGO, I have maybe two weeks to come up with, with 10 photographs that, that are going to sell to raise money. So and you're saying that by taking the photograph, then you're selling to the photograph, mm. part, part of the money coming from selling the photograph is going to the NGO. Yeah, that's, uh, okay. that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that gives you a purpose? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else, can, what, what else is important to you? Um, obviously, uh, passion. I started photography, I mean, I'm quite new to it, maybe eight years ago. Okay. Um, I've done many things. I was a soldier uh, and amongst other things, a, a plumber more recently <coughs> in London. <coughs> um, I remember my, when I went on a, on a plumbing job, for example, um, I used to just, I had thousands of um, photography magazines in my van yeah. and I used to devour them before I went on to a job and my boss would often call me and say, Paul, Paul, how's that toilet job coming along? And I'd say, uh, oh, it's, it's really difficult, it's, I've got problems on it, but really what I was doing was just reading magazines the whole time and, and trying to learn as much as I could. So I knew my passion was uh, was was in photography. I wanted something that was feeding uh, my soul or or rewarding my my um, my creative side, I guess. Okay. So that's that's why when I moved to Hong Kong, I was lucky to fulfill that and move on and and do more things with it. Like to be a professional photographer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else is important to you? Um, uh, originality is very important to me. I think, awesome. okay. 
I remember I went to photograph in India and I went to photograph a camel fair there. Yeah. And when I got there, there were a hundred other photographers all doing the same thing, and it was a was a huge turn off for me. So I think that's one of the reasons why I'm drawn to to countries which are, are difficult to photograph in. Mongolia, for example, is uh, if I was to lay Mongolia on a on a map of the United States, it would almost stretch from east to west. I mean, it's massive. So okay. the, the distances to get anywhere are are huge. Um, I also like people who are very different to me. So um, Mongolian culture is, is very, very unique. And I love, uh, I love being with people who are very different to me because I think that, that makes, that inspires me and I, I find them very interesting. Do you find Mongolia very interesting? Interesting. Uh, yes, because it, it, it is so different to anything that I'm used to. Okay, okay. So there are many genres of photography why did you decide to photograph people specifically? Um, I've done all types of photography. I've done food photography, which um, I think you have to play to your, to your strengths. And food photography, for example, you have to be uh, quite meticulous. I yeah. mean, I learned about lighting and, and that was quite useful. I mean, silly things like on, on a wine bottle, you've got reflections and things. I, I didn't really have the patience to, uh, to do that. I've done wedding photography. And, and things which the kind of work that makes money, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't really fulfilling me. Yeah. And I think when I I got to Mongolia and I started taking that kind of those kind of pictures, I think my photography you the really picture improved. That we are showing now. Yep. That's how you put it. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us about the picture then? Uh, this this little boy is is he's very symbolic of everything that I've done. In Mongolia, and this is maybe one of my favorite photographs. Um, you can see his one of the characteristics of my photographs is there's uh, eye contact with the with the subject. So the boy is looking at me, and also you'll notice in the background there's this wolf. It's it's a rug, and Mongolian culture there's the 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 culture talks about that they they are the children of of the wolf. Okay, and so that's. When I see this wolf sitting there, it looks like it's protecting the child. And then when the, the boy is pointing to me, he's saying, you as the, as the adults or the, or the observer, the photographer, are the responsibility of the kids in, in Mongolia. So I kind of, it's very symbolic. Um, just, just, it's just made me think, actually, when I look at this picture as well, and it's quite useful as a photographer, especially when you're learning, is to have somebody who will look at your pictures and go, oh, Paul, I see a a characteristic of your your photographs and with mine it's I tend not to have many foreground and background inches it's quite flat but there's this kind of one two three thing going on so um, which is the one which is the two which is the three here I guess the the boy the the table the and, the, and, and, then and the and the and the wolf and this and this red door so it's like a one two three okay so, so photographing this does it give you a purpose uh, yes, it does. I mean, the, the other thing is this, this boy. Well, this boy was a, a chance meet, actually, because uh, when we're working <coughs> with the NGR, we have um, <coughs> council workers or uh, social workers, rather, <coughs> who, who take us around, taking us to families who are at risk. And they usually say, oh, these, these parents are they're alcoholics or whatever. I mean, actually, let me describe this area. The, I, this area outside of Ulaanbaatar is is a bit like the favelas of, of, of Brazil. It's okay. um, it's uh, there's no running water in these places. People live in in gas. Um, it's quite violent. There's a, a big drinking problem. There's no running water. In fact, the charity where I where I work in the whole district is only one or two buildings that have running water. So, but this this boy was a chance meeting. Um, we were looking for a particular family mm -hmm. and we, we just came across him and we were playing games uh, behind a fence and he, we kind of had this bonding thing going on. In fact, he's, in s he's still my screensaver on my, my phone at present, so he's like a, a reminder to me that of my responsibility to, to the charity and the kids there. So they fulfill a purpose? Yes. Okay. Yes. So can you tell us about this old lady? Um, when... Um, one of my favorite Chinese words is qi, and qi is, talks about life force or, or energy. 
and that is one of the reasons why I like photographing people because with people they are, they're always changing and they're always original so uh, this particular woman she she really didn't mind me photographing it's just behind the window and uh, it's part of a part of a triptych Ten seconds. Uh, sorry that's okay <laughs> So yeah. this woman doesn't mind being photographed. She, I think she, it was quite incredible. I, she, she, she really didn't mind, and, and I found it, I found it very interesting. So how do you connect with her by photographing her through the window? This uh, is in her house, or this she's is in her house, and okay. I'm standing outside. We ac actually had been inside talking, talking with them. Okay. Um, and okay. we'd come out after, and I'd uh, actually this has made me think of um, when I'm photographing in Mongolia. It, it, it changed the way I do things because uh, I, I learned that I had to ask permission because in Mongolia I've been there nine times and I've been not physically abused but I've been grabbed and I've had the, the window of my car bashed by, by people when they saw me photographing. So now I really um, operate with a, with a big team, there's yeah. four or five people from, from the from the NGO, and they they enable me to, to get access to these homes and these people. So I usually, if I'm approaching men, I will offer them cigarettes. Okay. And the kids, they get they get sweets. Okay. And I use a Polaroid camera. Did uh, you give him sweets? <laughs> no, the this kid. this is quite. Yeah, tell this, us. this boy is is with his stick. Yeah. And uh, it's part of a triptych. And it's quite symbolic again of how. Um, Mongolian people are. I mean, they're quite. They're very, very tough. They're some of the toughest people I've ever come across. And this, this boy, he came up with a stick and unprompted, he uh, he loaded his rifle, uh, took aim, and fired. So he's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's quite quite different. Okay. So, can you share with us what is in your mind when you're taking all this photograph of um, this? Mongolian people. Um, I guess I, I love the build-up to it. I mean, when we're approaching a, a house, I mean, there's many things going through my mind. So, first thing that's in my head is uh, is respect. So when I'm there, I I'm genuinely want to. I, I'm really in the moment. I want to be with these people, and I, I find it very. Uh, it's very fulfilling, yes. So, for example, if we then enter a house, yeah. and uh, I'm instantly in the house, I'm thinking, right, I know whether this is going to be a good opportunity. So it's a process. It is a process, yeah. It's a process. Yeah. Can you tell us what exactly, so when you go into a room, you see all these people, and then so how how is how you structure how you how you manipulate or whatever how you how you make the photo happen? Um, so what because that's what that's is telling us that what is in your mind because of your action. Uh, have we got that picture of the? Uh, yes, this one. This one this one is called uh, Back to School. Yeah. And this this whole process for for example here, the. I go in and there's there's this, this uh, she's the grandmother and the two the two kids. This is a dress rehearsal before um, going back to school. So it's the day before school. Okay. This this woman is exceptionally poor. She's probably living on forty US dollars a month or something. I mean it's, it's crazy cheap, but yet she has this huge amount of pride. You can see uh, in her, her her body language that her life evolves around these two grandchildren. And usually the case um, in Mongolia with with the, I'm generalizing, but alcohol alcoholism is a, is a huge problem. So mm. usually the parents are, are off somewhere and they, they're drunk and they're not available. So the responsibility falls to usually the women and the, the grandparents in this case. So here this woman is, she's got her, her two kids there, little outfits are all starched and uh, looking very cute. And, and it's, it's these kind of moments where I feel really alive, like I'm I just know that there's something very, very special. So this going is something on. penetrate through your mind, and this is like you see something, and you have this idea, and then you want to photograph because that's what in your mind. Uh, 
I guess so. I think I think I just know that I'm witnessing something very special. What is so special about this picture then? Well, tell us more. What 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 is going on with the boys? Uh, I like the. I mean, if. if if you look closely enough at a photograph, if I was to describe the character of the boy on the on the right, he's making eye contact with me, and I can tell that instantly that boy is he's quite engaging. He's one of those kids that's uh, slightly extrovert, and uh, he has a sense of fun about him. He wanted to communicate with me, whereas the the other boy there, he's like holding the twenty US dollar note which the charity had given him, okay. and he's kind of like looking, thinking, "Are we done yet?" He's more. Um, uh, he's kind of going to be the responsible one, and I think that's what I love about the photographs. And then, and this this old lady who's just got this utmost the pride and the in, in those two kids, it's, it's really beautiful. I think this. I remember this scenario. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I, I think I went home and actually cried, not through sadness, but just having witnessed something that was so special. And uh, so yeah, I mean. So can I dial back? Mm. Where where is the one two three of this picture? Because this is, <laughs> well, y you said the one two three yeah. with the chi with the connection, and then because all the one two three and the flow and the human, you know, there are a lot of things going through your mind. Yeah. So where 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 well, is like, the one two three here? Like I haven't cropped the picture. So like okay. I actually like the, um, this the, the, the colors cabinet. of this the cabinet. The cabinet is the one and the. The old lady and the two and the kids are the three. It's like there's three three things going on. So so you have these three things going on in your mind and you and you find this one is more engaged, one is more like whatever, and then the grandmother has the other facial expression. So yeah. this is yeah. so when you see this, you know that this is the moment that you want to do this. I think so. I mean if I see a beautiful scenario like this, I I will I will not stop till I, I feel I've got I've got the picture. Um, also, in my photographs, I only use natural light. I don't like using flash or one because I think it, it takes away the, the whole feeling, that, that chi that I was talking about earlier. It loses its naturalness. So if the room is dark, then I would rather the, the image was... So uh, this is all natural lights. There's no, no flash. No, no it's just coming through the window or a Do you remember what time is it about? This what? is uh, during the day and the afternoon. Like in the afternoon? Yeah. Is it like yeah. the summer? Is it like before September? Summer, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I believe you are going to show us a short documentary. Yeah. And then... Is there anything that you want to tell us before everybody start uh, watching the yeah, documentary? The, hello. <laughs> the, um, uh, the, there are two families that we meet. And the first one are, are some twins and the older sister. The twins go to the charity and I photograph them when they were really they were babies. And I've been working now in Mongolia for four years. So uh, I've, I've witnessed their, their growth. And again, it's uh, the opening sequences, we go into a ger. A ger is a yurt, it's a, it's a, it's a Mongolian home. And the, the photographer, the, the guy who's doing the, the video, is using a, a Sony camcorder, which is annoyingly good in low light conditions. So when he goes in, it instantly brightens up. It's actually very dark. Are you selling inside. Sony here? No, I'm just saying okay. it, it ruined the ambiance. <laughs> okay. But the uh, and the other thing I want to get across is that it's minus 15, which is that's it, cold. It, it's it's really shit. I mean, and and when you see the the next, we we, we meet a, a mother after that, and she's a, a, an extreme alcoholic. And we, you'll see inside the house, it's it's quite it's quite disturbing. Uh, sh there are two kids and her all sleeping in one bed, mm. uh, and there's no. Well, I mean, she's she's too drunk to have the heating on, so it's it's quite disturbing. But these are uh, the things. I won't ruin it. Let's let's start. Let's start the. the, the Should we? Oh, okay. On the, on the iPad? Let's move it. Who's the millennial that can do volume? <laughs>
shit. Oh, it's us. Okay, what I'm saying here is um, I'm waiting for the kids to get bored because when, when I first start photographing, they're all standing to attention and uh, they're all like this and expectant okay, of the what picture. I'm saying here is, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very weird. Should we do this? When, when I first start photographing, they're all standing to attention. I can I can talk about what I was saying. <laughs> no no no. Buy and then you can drop off the or you can go video direct. Can you live what is it? I can I can talk about what I was saying. I don't know. No, that's just just what he said. Um, you may have seen the, the picture there and the, re the resulting image of the, the two, two twins and the girl. So <laughs> this is then after what well, you'll see. So now I'm talking about... Hmm? It has noise. Yeah, it, it's on already. Oh. Uh, it's a bit delayed. But it's okay, it's okay. It's my technology. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't hear it. Should we start again? Yeah, I think we should start again and then... Can you start again? But uh, the video is going to be... I think also <coughs> what I say in the car is more... Because I'm fresh from the whole experience and so maybe it's more, more impactful, I don't know. Otherwise I can repeat. <laughs> Thank you. Where get it from? <laughs> okay, so these, the twins, the parents, uh, were living in this care. And they, I think they're in the countryside because uh, they are drunk. This is the grandmother of the two twins. They go to the charity. And this is uh, in their home. So I, I walk in, I'm instantly liking the light, but you see the Sony camcorder just got whoop, and everything is really bright. It's actually very dark in there. Just light coming in from the window. I like this whole, um, like a classic painting or Caravaggio where you have this light coming in from one angle. <coughs> I'm a big, big fan of that. So I photographed these kids before, as I said, they're all jumping around and things. And I give them Polaroids. <coughs> So when did you meet them? When did you first meet the twins? Uh, I met them three, four years ago when they were just babies. When was this? <coughs> this was in January, February of this year. Oh, okay. So, okay, what are you talking here? So now, now I start talking about the, uh, the, the drunk lady that we're going to go and see, uh, which for me was one of the most difficult situations I've ever been in with, uh, with photography, I think, because there's that decision of whether you photograph or not. And I think that was, I mean, it taught me that I think I'd be useless as a war photographer because I, I think I, 
it, just, it made me realize that, that those kind of things are very very difficult and um, the kind of when I take pictures I want people to like me I don't want to be <laughs> I don't want to be hated so I mean you can see oh, yeah, okay. just it will, it'll come up in a minute so there's the result of the photograph so we we go into this this drunken lady's place she has sleeping in one bed uh, two kids and you mentioned that at the moment this minus 15 yeah Celsius. it's minus 15 <laughs> it's uh, yeah it's minus 15 there's um, uh, we go into her home. She's she's so drunk that she is she can she can barely talk. And she and this is a daily occurrence for her. So th th her two kids they are um, nine and it's sl slightly older. And they're boys and they're all sleeping in this one bed. Somehow I mean the, the, you'll see in a bit the accommodation is is tiny. Um, initially when I was there I I didn't want to photograph her because I thought. It would. It was disrespectful. Mongolians are very, very proud people, okay. and uh, I thought, no, this this is not achieving anything by 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 showing somebody who's very poor, or it's not achieving anything. Did you get her permission to before you I, go? I, I asked her uh, no, if I could before you go to yes, pay yes. her a visit. Yeah, the charity again. We used the social workers, and they took us there because she her family's at risk, okay. and she didn't want me to photograph her initially. But at one point, she brought out a family portrait, and uh, and I think this is this is when the the dynamic. Are we going to see it? You will see the portrait in a minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The the dynamic changed, and I suddenly thought, oh, maybe I can make this scenario more about her family pride, because I I, I felt suddenly, oh, this is different, and I can we can share her story more in a, in a positive light. So I then asked her, is it okay we take your your photograph? With the, with the picture. So it's more about the chi then, so you change your perspective of how you shoot the photograph and you mentioned that it all happened in a split second and you have everything going on in your mind so you just you have to look at it and then to find yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Um, so th yeah the dynamic did change and, and, and I photographed her and then when we left uh, I mean, apart from oh, there was one moment where she she burst into tears, and I remember thinking, oh, this is very awkward. I didn't know whether it was culturally wrong. Yeah. Oh, she's just to drunk. <laughs> she was really drunk. But I, I didn't know whether it was wrong to give her a hug. But I gave her a hug anyway. Ah, okay. <coughs> now you're going in. Okay. It's, okay. It looks really cold. Okay, tell us again. So okay, this she's drunk. This lady. She, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, she's. She's really, really drunk. Oh my God! So this is this is the entrance going through uh, into the room, and this is in the room. Oh, oh sorry. No, it's okay. So this is where she lives. Yeah. That's the entrance. Yeah. That's not the garbage bin. No. Okay. Tell us, tell us. So we're in her room, and again, it's very, very dark. Um, there's just one strip light, and the. Um, the heating there is a, is a little wood wood stove, same as that you'd have in, in a gear, <coughs> but uh, it's not on, so she's she's not capable of keeping herself warm. Um, so you'll you'll see in a minute. You'll, I'm taking the picture, and you'll, you'll see the result. So my I've fulfilled my purpose because I mean my my reason for photographing because I can then use this image to to tell this very story, which in turn will, will bring awareness to the, the NGO and again that I mean that's 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 why I'm there is just to isn't uh, to bring awareness can I, so the money goes to her or goes to the children it goes to uh, the her charity who then yeah. lo look after the kids who employ the the six people who work and look after the 40 50 60 kids okay that's great so. that's great oh here we go I'm taking, I'm taking the photo off, so. Oh, and it's quite interesting. I mean, you've, you've got this. Ironically, you've got this this old style portrait where they're all wearing traditional Mongolian gear, and I, uh, it's quite sad this, how her circumstances have changed because of uh, alcoholism. Oh, so that's the picture. That's the result. Yeah. 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 Okay. So let's move on. So, how many pictures in average 
on average that you have to take like for example that drunken lady because she seems as she said she is she's drunk she is her her place is all over the place it's a bit of a mess yeah and on average how many pictures do you take in a particular setting like um, that well, for there it was just very quick I, I maybe five six shots because it was shots. very yeah i mean it's quite an awkward situation i, I don't want to make her feel uncomfortable whereas in other circumstances like with the kids i will be taking lots of pictures knowing full well that all those pictures are going to be rubbish i'm just kind of playing for time waiting for for them to get bored and to and to uh, start Execute. relaxing so yeah. when i take pictures of of, of kids in, in a group uh, I like or, uh, people in a group. I want everybody to be doing their own thing, like looking in different directions. So, uh, can you tell us how many pictures have you take had you taken in order to show us this powerful image? And mm -hmm. can you tell us what what is going on? I saw half of a breast out uh, there. This this picture showed that um, actually it, it didn't. It got pulled. Um, I had a, an exhibition along with Joseph and. Uh, uh, three other people at the Shenzhen Museum of Art. It was a, a monochrome series, and this uh, this one wasn't allowed to be shown in whoop, wasn't allowed oh, to be shown in, <laughs> in case sorry. You, in case you missed it. Uh, <laughs> um, it it wasn't allowed to be shown in China actually because of because of the breast, which was quite surprising. I, I mean, China or maybe it's just this museum is it's quite conservative. Uh, more than I than I could have realized. Um, I love this photograph again. You see, I've got that one, two, three going in this Caravaggio light coming in from one direction. Uh, but what I love about this picture is uh, how relaxed the family are with my presence, which is which is quite unusual. I mean, the kids watching TV and the the other ones, um, I don't know what they're playing around, and, and the woman's breastfeeding. So uh, it's. it's it's kind of one of my also one of my favorite photographs. How long has this? Sh how long was this short? How long? How long did you take? How long was it go going for? Like um, ten minutes? We, we were probably minutes? in that go for about half an hour. So I imagine yeah. I've got a whole team with me, and they're all standing mm. behind me, and they're all chatting and talking in Mongolian, obviously. Yeah. And at this point, the the they're all relaxed, and they're thinking, oh, apparently the she's very relaxed. The photographer's done done his business, and yeah, we're, we're not. So it's, it's that's usually at that time when I execute. So do you remember roughly how many pictures have you oh, taken um, until like from them to to <laughs> be in the set within that half an hour, and then you finally chose this powerful picture to show everybody? Uh, I don't know. I could have taken thousand, hundred, hundred, a hundred maybe. I, I really don't know. And this this case is difficult to tell. I can't really remember. So, mm. uh, yeah. So it's different <coughs> every time. Yeah, it can really really change. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Let's move. We're on to my five. Five images, is it? I've chosen yeah. five images. Five. Well, okay. You have chosen another five different. Yeah. These are not all. The next five pictures, the photos that we are going to see, they're not Mongolian related. Uh, some are, and, and oh. some are not. I, I just, I, I chose five of these pictures because I thought. Uh, the story behind them is quite interesting, and okay, it's it's all related to my NGO work. Okay, can you first tell us? Is the picture on? Yeah. Okay, can you yeah. first tell us which NGO that you're working for? And so this how, one, how 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 it's all started? Yeah, this one is in uh, Cambodia, working for Hagar, which is a a girl trafficking, a female trafficking charity. Anti trafficking. Anti trafficking. Trafficking is not a charity. Anti trafficking is a charity. Sorry. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> and. Uh, um, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite true. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, I cannot photograph the girls because okay. their, their identity needs to be protected. So I, I chose to photograph on the train tracks outside of Phnom Penh, and it's a it's a slum area. And I, I later found out actually that this particular area um, has the highest incidence of rabies in the world, or rabies infections or deaths or something like that. But I, I fortunately I didn't know about that till after. So. When I photographed there, I was going early light and first light and last light. So up very early and and what? And how early? Like five o'clock in the morning. For sunrise, I'll be six o'clock for this. Because this it's thing. super hot. Because of the light, so you're oh, a okay. nice uh, during the day. It's uh, in hot countries is very very harsh light. So okay. um, NGO. What what's the NGO? Anti trafficking and then. This is anti trafficking. So here so I am photographing 
I had to come up with, with 10 images again. I've got my, my purpose, my, my two weeks, and I'm looking for chi in my images. So here I come across this guy, and I think this was the first time in my life where I actually felt uh, Wait, how did you dangerous. come across with him? He's just in the street? or uh, he's This is along the train tracks in, okay. in, in, in the slum area. Okay. So um, I, for the first time ever, I felt actually quite threatened by this guy because he was, uh, he's got this pink, pink whip and he was beating things. I, I think was he, he was, drunk? I think he was high okay. or, or something like that. And he was acting quite, uh, I mean, he was, he was all over the place. Okay. But I, when I clocked him, I thought I, I have to photograph him. But he was wearing his mask uh, on top of his head like that. And when I approached him, I said, I indicated we can't, I cannot speak Cambodian. I said, can I photograph you? And he said, no. And then I thought, shit, I really, really want to photograph this guy because he's, I mean, he's so impressive. So I gestured with my, my baseball cap and I pulled it over my face yeah. to say, you know, if you wear the mask, then uh, it will protect your identity. And he, he, said, he said yes. And I must have had three seconds with him. And uh, he, he was kind of standing or butch. And at this particular moment is when he's telling me to stop. And he's like, no more. And I, that was it. And I instantly stopped. But uh, it was... It was uh, quite a powerful, powerful moment for me. It's a very powerful. Do you know what's the mask for? I I don't know. I don't okay, know. let's uh -huh. move on to the second picture. <laughs> so okay, this looks like India. Yeah, this is in uh, in Pushka, okay. where I, I photographed that camel fair. Wait, can, is it uh, NGO related? Uh, no, I was teaching there. Actually. Ah, okay. I was teaching some, but um, this is I think technically one of my favorite photographs because it looks like it's it's a setup it looks like I call it the play and uh, each one of those I'm using a very wide angle I think it was a 28 everybody thought I was photographing them so they're all posing for me uh, essentially the guy the guy on the left who kind of has this Jesus like figure and then the, the second one in he's got a monkey attached to him and then the the old lady uh, the, the Indian lady sitting there she's holding a, a camcorder or something and for me, that's my, my, my time block. It, I like including in, in a picture something that identifies us with a, a time. So that brings us to, to now. I mean, if that camcorder wasn't there, that could be any. That could be 200 years ago or whatever. Uh, then we've got the cow. The cows are holy in India. And then we've got this crazy man with a, with a mustache. So, uh, and then in, in India's most uh, holy lake in the background. Okay, can you share what's the purpose of the pi what, of taking this picture? How does you fulfill like a a, 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 a purpose? Um, <laughs> well, I wasn't working for an NGO at this time, so I guess ah, I can't okay. I can't say that I hadn't. But I I mean I was I was teaching. It was like a small group of us. Okay. So yeah. Let's move on. Yep. Okay. Oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> can you tell us about is Jesus there? Jesus there. Uh, this. This was in um, Cambodia, also part of the NGO work that I was doing there. The anti-trafficking? Yep. Okay. And uh, this is in Boca Mountain, in uh, just outside Kampot. And this church is a 1930s abandoned uh, building built by the French. And you can see the graffiti in the background. And you know, I talk about chi and wanting this chi in, in a photograph, where yeah. here I have something that's plastic, but it, it still had this... Uh, sense of chi. I mean, if you look, uh, uh, in fact, one of the guys in our photography group, he bought this picture, Matt, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> so, okay. But uh, if you look at Jesus closely, he's, his arm is, he's been blown off and uh, almost where his heart is, you've got these, this huge hole where these flowers are coming out. And I remember when I got there, I was with my friend Debbie and it was a very, very misty day. So we had this uh, gray diffused light coming in through the windows and uh, we really felt like we were it sounds silly but it felt like we were in the presence of something very special so my friend Debbie and I were speaking in hushed tones again oh my god isn't this amazing and well we were like really I wanted to, to try and get the feeling we felt in the picture was is, is actually very very difficult um, but I, I hoped it worked and I did something which I will never do again as I actually went back to, to see Jesus again uh, about three months later and Jesus was gone and it was oh. a bright sunny day and the whole the whole feeling that whole sense of chi had, had disappeared so 
uh, often with photography is it's really about just just a moment and a, and a feeling if there's if it's not there then it's, it, it's never going to show in your pictures so we should be glad that you took that picture because <laughs> you captured a particular moment do you remember when was this taken uh, it I mean it, it's always summer I mean it was two years ago I think and when did yeah. you go back again? a year and a half and then I went back four months ago so after about one and a half year and yeah. then the the, the was the church demolished? No, the church is. I mean, it's a the church was still iconic there. monument. It, okay. it was. I mean, uh, the Khmer Rouge, who I mean, the, the war that went on into the seventies. This was still one of their final strongholds right up until the nineties. So um, it has this kind of feeling about it. Okay, let uh, me go off the tr the the picture off bit. So you went back one and a half year for the same charity. Uh, no, just on my own oh, when okay. I was I was teaching. I just wanted to, out of interest, I wanted to go back there and to ah, see, okay, to okay. see. And but it, okay. the moment had moved on. Because I want to, yeah. I, I want to understand what the connection. Uh, I was just curious to see, uh, mm. but it, that was it. It was gone. It was finished. So no more plastic flowers. No more Jesus. So. But you served the purpose already. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So what's the, what the next one? It looks like. Oh, uh, this is uh, Mongolia. These are. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, what I love about this picture is uh, this one also exhibited in, in Shenzhen uh, at the art museum. But uh, Mongolians are, are very macho people, and wrestling is the number one sport. So the the three manly pursuits in Mongolia are wrestling, archery, and horse riding, and they do all three really, really, really well. And what I love about this picture is um, it looks like two guys in a in a dance or a loving embrace or something which is completely contrary to what they're doing I mean they were they were beating beating the shit out of one another and I uh, I love that kind of uh, questioning in the photograph it, it's uh, just it's something quite beautiful in, in the but yet in a very uh, rough environment so where is this is it in this the is in gymnasium or is it, is this is in Ulaanbaatar the capital city no uh, uh, I it's I it's in a it's in a training hall. It's a, it's, it's a wrestling, wrestling hall. Wrestling yeah. This okay. was the the junior national wrestling team. Okay. So I, I mean I was very lucky to have access because uh, the NGO family that I work for there's the I call him the, call him the uncle. He's yeah. he's an ex wrestler. He's ex military, and he um, I mean just having people like it which enable me to to get access to these kind of things. So it was it was a huge privilege. So how is this? Sorry, I, I in my. Sp seem a bit off spinning but how is this if if you sell this picture how is this going to be benefit to, to the NGO because uh, I think that's a big part of the purpose yeah this one's so, this you one's as so a stronger yeah. photographer so how how it, how is this picture related to the NGO so by selling this you would just yeah. this this one has uh, I've sold one of these yeah okay. at auction yeah. oh good for you okay do we have more oh, okay we do uh, yeah, people who <laughs> people who know me will know why I took this picture. But I, I, I was in uh, in Laos, and we were we we're doing it in a trek. It's not NGO related, but I, mm. uh, it was in a very misty in a jungle area, and I clocked him like 500 meters away, and I I left our group and just disappeared to go and photograph him. And uh, uh, when I saw him, I think what I love is the juxt juxtaposition of this kind of very striking handsome man but in a very rough environment so it was like builders workers and stuff like that and I, I asked him to stick the, the cigarette in to give him that kind of James Dean James Dean look, look. So, so I mean I, I I mean it shows that I do sometimes ask people to do different things or move or uh, if, if a kid's sitting in a room and I don't like the color of their shirt I'll ask them to sit to one side a little bit just to because I want to make the, the, the photograph work so that's also part of the thing that go to to construct the picture in the way that you want. So you a gesture bit. them like pulling the, the mask down, asking to have the cigarette yeah. on or move the kids around. I, yeah, I think I, I don't manipulate too much, but there is a little bit of that going on sometimes. Yeah, I think that's allowed. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. You're taking the picture. Okay, should we move? Do we? Ha oh, we have more. Okay, what's uh, going on here? Uh, this. I went to um, Kathmandu mm -hmm. just soon after the, the earthquake, I think it was four or five years ago, where, I mean, it was a major earthquake where even Mount Everest moved 1.2 meters or something ridiculous. It was a major, major earthquake. And this is at a, a, um, a, 
industry. It's not. It's at a very one of the largest. Um, what you call it? Um, not temple. 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 Thank you. And uh, it's where they have burials. So they burials and they're, they're burning bodies and on fires and things like that. And they just push them into the river. It's very in your face. You got life and okay, death. Wait, wait, coming you have to give us a bit more of the background. What happened? Uh, so, for example, I mean, I'm walking. I'm in this whole environment, and I'm seeing life and death in front of me. Um, actually, you're right. I, I had two Why? weeks before this yeah. photograph. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Two weeks before this photograph, uh, I bought a um, picture of a, a Cambodian boy sniffing glue, and it's part of a diptych. And the first picture is him inhaling the glue from a bag like this, and then he's looking straight at the photographer, me like that. And so, this, I mean, I love the picture. It's just, it's a very, it's a young boy. I mean, he's full of spots, but uh, it's a, it's very, very powerful. So it's not healthy. He's not healthy, but it's, it's somehow, I don't know, it's beautiful, but it's just very interesting. I just love, I love the photograph. Okay. So I have this in my mind. I go to this temple where I'm seeing dead bodies and blah, blah, blah in, in this temple. And the dead bodies, where are the dead bodies coming well, they, from? They're burning, they're, they're bringing dead bodies and they're burning them by the river and then they push the ashes into, into the stream. Is that the cremation place? Cremation, yeah. But it's, uh, it's, it's open, it's in front of everybody. It's part uh, of the, okay. uh, I forget uh, the name of the, the temple. Okay, okay. So when I'm walking along and I see this boy here, which and one? The older one? The, or the, the young, one? the young boy on the right. Oh, so okay. he, he, um, I, I'm walking along and I suddenly see him. He's got a big yellow bag and there he is sniffing glue right in front of me. And I looked at him and I completely froze. It just threw me. It was crazy. I was just staring at him. Yeah. And then he, he burst into tears when he looked at me because I don't know whether it was whether he felt ashamed or, or something, but he just then burst into tears. I mean, if you look closely at him, he's, he's, he's homeless. Uh, his, his fingernails are, uh, are black. I mean, it's, it's, Ooh, it's okay. yeah, he's, it's really, really, really sad. So, and it was this point again that I realized I could never be a war photographer because that is the moment you wanna, you wanna catch the boy sniffing the glue and stuff. And I just couldn't, I felt so um, and, and disrespectful. It would have been disrespectful for me. I don't want. It's not. It's not my business to, to, to do that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, at this point, I didn't know whether to to go and hug him or say I'm sorry. I'm you know don't worry or whatever. I, I would give him money. I just had no idea. But fortunately, this time a, a woman came along and slapped him across the head and which diffused the whole uh, atmosphere. And then it was. Then he sat down and he's. I mean, he's just looking at me with this kind of gesture. Uh, and, and I love I love the whole the dynamic of this picture the way that the guy on the left is looking in his his leg is lifted it kind of makes you feel like you're you're falling your 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 gaze is drawn into this boy on on the right so um, it's it has it has strong strong memories for me and even the little the Should underneath his feet you yeah. see the, the the floor has lifted up I don't yeah. know whether that's because of the result of the earthquake or not but it's that whole there's this whole story thing going on for me. Do we have more pictures? I think that's it. Oh, okay. So this is about my 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 future. Uh, okay. My future works. Let's wait. Or my current Let's works. wait then. So based on what you just told us, you have been working with all these refugee camps, mm. um, anti-human trafficking on the rail, yeah. um, extreme weather, 15, 40 degrees Celsius and all that. Yeah. So it sounds pretty tough. So as a photographer, how do you maintain and so it requires a lot of physical strength um <laughs> i guess so i mean physical strength i think it's all just boils down to that originality for me i love being in situations which people don't really want to be because it is un uncomfortable but i get a, a huge kick out of the the, the adventure out of, well, yeah. why am I saying this? Is I don't think I could survive any of this. I'm such a princess. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, um, it, 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 it's determination. It's, it's, you know, you're dealing with a lot of rough people and then you don't know what is going to happen to you. And then you told us that there are bodyguards and then there are a rough area. And with that, yeah. with that man with the mask, I just want to know a little bit more um, what do you do to prepare yourself every time you go on uh, all this? Well, in Mongolia, sort of, to me, it's quite extreme. Yeah, in Mongolia, I'm, I'm a team. I mean, uh, I have the 
the charity are with me. It's a family. I mean, they are, I call them my Mongolian family. They, yeah. It's they are that they are my enablers and they give me access to all these people. So, I've 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 learned actually the best bodyguard is to have a a, a female mama or grandmother because there's this <laughs> there's this feeling of respect for women. So when, okay. for example, I was in a marketplace and this guy grabbed me around the shirt and he wanted to beat to, you up to to punch me. My okay. Mongolian mama she came along and grabbed him <laughs> and pulled him off and said in Mongolian, "Fuck off, otherwise I will kill you." And he stopped. And I think people listen to listen to women more. So it was she was the perfect the perfect bodyguard. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. So, okay. I mean, I, I kind of when the guy was grabbing me, I was half out of. Is this really happening? I was kind of laughing. It's, it's, it's very surreal. I mean, you don't expect so things like that to you happen. You are telling us that it's all about teamwork with what very, you do with the NGO. Very, very is much you have you build this team. You 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 because you are helping them, and mo I believe most of them are Mongolian in Mongolia. They're all they're your all team Mongolian members. Team, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, is this team building that helped you to do all this extreme photography? At least to me, and um, and that that serves a purpose. Yeah, I think so. I think that that defined my photography. I think I, I mean, when I was doing all different things, but whereas now it's more, I feel this is my niche. This is the thing I want to do. So I'm kind of now throwing myself into that that area. I mean, I'm, it's a fledgling stage. It's very early for me. So my my new project is uh, I'm in Thailand. Yeah, can you share with us what is your future project going to be? Yeah, I'm I'm in uh, Thailand working with uh, with boys this time who are trafficked. Tell me who are being trafficked? Who are being trafficked? Yeah. Okay, but they are mostly Burmese kids okay. who are yet they are born oh, in sorry. Thailand, and uh, because they don't have ID, they can they can never get work. They are they are. They are feral, really. These kids are are living. This is yep. Yeah, this is part of the. Okay. These are not the. the not kids. the future, but the, yeah. These uh, are these uh, kids are not connected to the charity because again, all the boys in the yeah. charity, I cannot photograph them because okay. their identity needs protecting. But, um, so yeah, this charity is called Urban Light, and it, uh, these are Burmese kids. They are born in Thailand, and they are, I mean, this this, so I couldn't photograph them. So my, I had to look for an angle that would, would relate. So I, I worked, I went and photographed a refugee camp. These are, these are Burmese. And these are ma mainly Shan and uh, Karen. Mainly people. what? Shan. What is Shan? So they, they're a, a tribe, a, a group, a big, big part of uh, Burma who are not recognized by the Burmese, but yet they have their own flag and their own language and their identity. <laughs> but they are geographically... They are in Burma, but they don't identify they as Burmese. They are in Burmas. Burma? No, no, this is in Thailand. They, these ah, are refugees okay. escaping from Burma. Ah, okay. I mean, you've okay. got the Where are Rohingya... They? You're off Rohingya. Rohingya, off yeah. to the... And these, but these guys are... I mean, for example, in, in North Thailand, there are over 100,000 refugees okay. um, who are second and third generation. Um, living there, and even yeah, even though they, they're sitting in these camps, some of these people have never left uh, the camp. Okay. Yeah, they, oh, they the cannot. Camp. They cannot leave the camp. Oh. So they are doing nothing. These ones, I mean, I initially thought, oh, here we go. This, these these Burmese people, they're living in Thailand. They are working at subsistence wages seven days a week, and they are ironically building um, Thai government housing. So there's the building law courts and all the ties. So I thought this is all it is. It's slightly it's it's, it's human abuse. But and then it's when more you modern day slavery, kind of yeah. But then when you start to dig deeper, you start to realize that actually maybe these ones are the lucky ones because the ones who are stuck in Burma are are working as slave labor for and doing nothing. The ones in those huge camps on the North Thai border, they are they cannot even get out of the camp. Can you wait? Can you tell us what happened to the boys again? Oh, okay. So yeah, they, the boys there they are um, they're aged between twelve and twenty five. Okay. And uh, the, the the center where where the charity works it's like a it's like a, a a place where they can seek refuge during the day. So they're away from. I mean, they are boys who will work for sex to get money. They're selling drugs, uh, anything to get money. And okay. Because they cannot do work legitimately. So what the charity does is. It gives them somewhere safe. They get food and they can wash and uh, and uh, and have somewhere to hang out. They have access to computers and then they get they get teaching. So they will 
for like your tuk tuk driver. You are not like allowed that. to photograph them directly, so you mm. have to work around in the mindset to the surrounding in the refugee camp. So I went to find something that, in some way, was related, so that again I could take get my ten pictures or whatever, and we can bring awareness to to the NGO. So it was like a different angle. Uh, this was more a, a documentary style. Mm. Um, so I mean, here I am, and you can see. Uh, um, inside here, I mean, there's so many ironies. I talked about these are Burmese people, who, who are considered illegal. Yet, in every single one of these little wriggly tin and and wooden shacks, you'll see this uh, calendar of the royal family. So oh, they they have oh. this huge conflict. Lo yeah, this loyalty to the Thai people, and yet they are not given uh, any rights that normal Thai people. So no, no rights to schooling or education or health. I mean, not free anyway. So. Um, it was interesting because I went, I, I established where I was going to go and photograph this, this camp and I did like a recce, I, I saw where it was going to be and I, I left and I went back to there to go and see where they were and the whole place had been bulldozed down and it disappeared. So I was thinking, oh where's my, where's my photography, where, what am I going to do? Because they had been moved and they were given three days because they had finished building the law courts, these Thai government housing, they were now moving them to another building site where they were building the next lot of government housing oh. so and, and they had three days so this is their their home so this is how how they exist this whole uh, insecure way of living of, of thinking where are we going to be next when that then that project's finished where are we going to go next so that would be something that you're going to do with the same NGO and then you're going to work with them but just yep. to follow this modern slavery tribe around they would know they have track them down and they would know uh, I, I guess so. I mean, it's it's quite quite complicated. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh okay. So I'm doing a a collaboration um, with uh, with Danny Chow, who is a he's a he's a printer in Hong Kong. He's or for me, he's he's all part of my process. So when I come to when I'm in Hong Kong, I buy all my camera equipment from this man, and then I go and take all my pictures. Uh, from this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> from this amazing shop. And then, and Danny is the the end. He's the end one. I, I use him. He does all my printing, and but he also has this. I mean, he's been in the business for 30, 40 years. But he also does hand coloring. So in the old days, we had um, when when images were monochrome, black and white, before color was invented, they used to hand paint, almost like little watercolors. But now he does it digitally. And so what I'm trying to do is bring another angle to try and in improve the chi. I don't know if it's a, it's an idea, it's something I had in my head, because when I see it, I, I love it. I think it's totally beautiful. So, for example, you've got this this mother here. So what I do is I show Danny a monochrome version, and then uh, he will interpret looking at the tones, saying whether that's a blue or whether it's a red. So, I mean, he's been... The doing shade, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he can judge oh, the color. Okay. So, oh, okay. so this is a hand-colored photograph. This, oh, this woman here with, with the baby. And again, I, I'm not using flash, or I want the to feel like it's a it's a classic painting. Uh, Where's the light coming from? This phone? So a strip light. Strip light. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm using. Uh, I mean, I just have to be. They have to be still. I'm really, 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 really slow shutter speed and everything. So, uh, but I just want that whole naturalness w with it. So this is yeah. This is a hand colored. I, I don't know it's very experimental I, I personally I think it's totally beautiful I'll show you the original this is this is the original maybe the originals nicer I don't know <laughs> it's kind of open to interpretation but I I, I love this hand coloring I just think I think it's it's quite magical uh, this is um, this uh, this uh, this one was very interesting you know when I go in and I, I try and um, guess people's mood or, or try and get a feeling Thailand. This is in Thailand, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, when I'm with her, usually when I see a mother with a baby, they have this kind of relationship going on where they're really, really connected. And I was, I couldn't work up with this woman. Why? She was always trying to tell me something, and I knew there was something with the relationship with her baby was not quite right. So, because she wasn't kind of cooing and saying, "Oh, how beautiful my baby is," and all that. And then I found out later that this is actually not her baby. And she's oh. been, um, she's been babysitting. She's been babysitting for four months, so the baby, or well, three months, the baby is four months old. The parents yeah. went back to Burma to go and get 
to earn money in order to get money for vaccinations and stuff like that and they disappeared so she's been stranded with this kid this this baby this is what the kind of message she was trying to tell me and i i just knew the dynamic was weird going on with the baby so yeah it's a very very sad story so you can, when you look at her face again when i think you kind of you don't know whether she's actually sad or whether she's smiling she's got this kind of half thing going on which is why i love it i just love the the whole drapery and the, the feeling that she this chi that she's giving off for me uh, so yeah it's, it's a sad it's quite impactful <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm speak. Oh, so they just dumped this baby to a random woman in the camp, and then they just. I think away. I think she's an auntie. I think she's she's related. So yeah, I mean it's life. It is life on the edge. It's quite. Uh, I mean, I, to, for parents to walk away from a baby just shows you how how desperate they must be. I think. I mean, or heartless. I don't know. I think desperation. I, well, I don't know. I mean, it's it's crazy. Okay, I have asked enough questions. Do does any of you have any question for Paul? Oh hello. <laughs> this is Paul. By These the are way, my yeah. Mongolian family, by the way. Some of them oh, are here. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's Emma and everybody else, and there's the the house Mark Conry, who's the the husband of the m wife who runs the charity. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, good so, for you. Yeah, they're all they're a big part of my life. So every time I go back to Mongolia, we come to we all drink vodka and get drunk every day, <laughs> 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 which is part of the business. Okay. Yeah. So none of you have questions. Uh, I have one question. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, previously you mentioned about the physical strength in order to. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, if if I were you, I can, I can imagine challenge on mentally. Do you, do you have mental challenge? On oh. Um, <laughs> One example is for, uh, uh, a parent's abandoned baby, another is a drunk parent. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. Their children, so. Oh, great question, yes. <laughs> um, really, when I went to this refugee camp, I thought I would be, I would be surrounded by sadness. <laughs> but weirdly, I, they were extremely happy the whole time. I mean, there's a lot of undercurrent, there's stories going on underneath, which like this one which are very very difficult and obviously they are very stressed but i did witness an incredible sense of community like people that the way the adults were with all the kids and so actually i felt constantly all this love going on i know it sounds weird I, it really isn't what i expected but your question i mean the woman who was drunk for sure that was really 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 difficult in fact for some reason seeing the video it was it was even sadder in a way actually because um, at the time you're going there and you, you're not almost prepared for what you're going to see and then if you try and put yourself in that situation and you think shit this is minus 15 and there's an eight-year-old and a nine-year-old boy all sleeping in this one bed with a drunk mother and that's a daily occurrence then it, I mean I can't even I can't even go there really I, I, I just don't know so uh, it's actually you're saying that it's better off for you not to over process it in order but it's to be strong and to go on with it Okay, um, sir, I have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Paul, hi. Thanks, Alex. Um, it's quite new, this uh, charity element. Hmm. Have you found, from starting to where you are now, that things have normalised? I did a lot of this for about 10 years, and I got to the point where it wasn't bad enough, and I asking I need it to be worse I can't take oh. pictures of this I ended up quite badly affected by all oh, that okay. but what I'm wondering is, is if you can see you changing and you've said quite a lot that you oh this is the point that this changed this, this is the moment that I felt this and I wonder if you can see that like the next time you go back there just like Jesus was, isn't there you know, like, oh the kids are well they're okay I need something a bit Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know. I, I yeah. Will you well, basically, I'm saying, will you take a picture of that drunk lady in five years' time and not even question it? Oh. If she recovered? No. Just in, in the same just circumstances. Just oh, this. Oh, so sh nothing has been improved. It, but do you feel that in five years you? Oh, do so you think it, would I become? 
hardened. Yeah. yeah. Shit. I Oof. hope not. Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, because I am very new to it, but um, yeah, that's scary. I think I don't, it's something to think about. I mean, because you're right, I'm trying to make this NGO my thing. Uh, and it, it is very, very new for me. And I think I, I mentioned earlier about being a war photographer. I, there's not a chance in how I'd want to do that. I, I mean, my, my hero is Sebastio Salgado. I mean, he, he was in Africa witnessing the worst things that you could ever imagine, as you know. And I, I just couldn't do that. It made him sick. I mean, it's, it's not something I would... I also mentioned I also <laughs> I like to be liked by the people <laughs> I photograph. So I, I like seeing all these very cute, happy kids all smiling and laughing at me, and I, I think that's the the reward. And I think I'm knowing I, I'm I'm just scratching the surface. I'm I'm really I'm not I'm not the charity workers. These people are there daily. They are making the food. They are seeing the strong lady. I'm just coming in at the very very taking a picture and then leaving. So I think it's 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 quite different. I mean, if I was to be there for weeks and weeks, then yeah, yeah, I think he would become hard in, in order to, to deal with it, like a nurse in a hospital or whatever. I mean, I know my mother was a complete tyrant because she was a nurse for 40 years, <laughs> she wouldn't care to, to hurt. So, sorry, yeah, thanks, Alice. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, we have one more question at least one more question. Well, Thank it's you. about the same. So, when, when you come back here, you go on um, like a mission trip or something. Come back here. How do you cope? Or, you know, where do you put those feelings? And you come back to your real life. Not, not that that's not your real life. Yeah, yeah. Probably, I don't know. You have another job here, or how do you? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, this is your mainly. Yeah. How do you cope and go going back to your bed and your warm water and your, you know? Quite easily, I guess. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I mean, it's um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't take on board that too much. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm aware. Like I said, that little boy, you know, with a wolf. He's he's my screensaver, not a particular picture. But I, I, when I open my phone, I will see him, and it's like just a constant little reminder. Go, oh, my connection is with Mongolia still. I mean, I even have a. A tattoo. This this means uh, Ulaanbaatar, which is the the capital, capital city, and it means red hero. So all my photography events are red heroes. Red hero one, two, three, which I had um, auctions, which you know raise money and awareness kind of thing. So I mean, it's very part of me. But no, taking that that kind of negativity, or maybe I don't see it as negative. I mean, I don't know. I think because it's, it served, as you said, if you told us, uh, to told us, it served a purpose, so you can stick through it. If you go and so. you know, and you, you're not, you're just taking all the money away, and you're not recontributing to the charity. That's another story. Yeah. Because if I understand correctly, a big chunk of the pictures being sold is actually going back to the charity. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess there's it's more than two third. Yeah. It's more, it's more than two third. Yeah, I'm a banker. I can calculate. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. more than two third. Okay, yeah. that's admirable. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's rewarding. I think the other thing as well is it it makes if I'm gonna go and photograph in Hong Kong, I get frustrated. I feel I want something edgy, so I I, I don't feel I don't want to take pictures of chickens in windows or whatever. I just want to. <laughs> I just I feel I have to go and push the boundaries all the time. Maybe Alex is right. I think you're right. Actually, <laughs> you can see it coming. I I don't know. I need to keep an eye on that, and I have to gouge money out of somewhere in order to keep going to and my trips to Mongolia get more and more extreme actually you're right you're right <laughs> so when I for example when I first went there four or five years ago I just got in a taxi with a guy who, who couldn't uh, speak in I couldn't speak in Mongolia and I I just say just take me somewhere dangerous I mean that was my my thing were you and by he, yourself yes Oh, this was before I got to know the family actually I was connected indirectly through another girl to the charity okay but uh, and he, the driver, wanted to take me to all the tourist spots like Genghis Khan on a horse and stuff like that. I, I was saying no, this is not what the pictures I want to take. I, I, I want there's a Louis Vuitton in Mongolia. Did you bring it's it just, there? It's just closed. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have been there and I went there on the, the very last day. Are you and serious? And I had champagne upstairs. Oh Jesus! Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but um, that would have been Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Closing down Vuitton. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, so my things got more and more extreme. I was in Ulaanbaatar and I said, no, I want grunge, I want dirt, I want old people, I want wrinkles and, and 
but then my adventures I want them to be more extreme so I say I want to go west I want to see different things but not the commercial things again this going back to originality I do not want to take pictures although I will just for my own like uh, an eagle on it because we've all seen it and they're commercial they're nice but that's not what I want to do I think uh, going back to this reason for photography is you have to have a, an angle which is original so my my angle is Mongolia is a, is a nomadic uh, country and people are moving from the countryside to the city and my story is about these families and I think nobody's taken that angle before and I'm using my privileged position with the charity to have access to these families which I think other people don't have and I also I think Mongolian people are not that interested like my Mongolian family say why are you taking a picture of this <laughs> this old lady how is this gonna make money and then you and then I think but actually no. other people are interested but they're not aware because they see it as normal this this whole the family coming from the countryside living in the city uh, in uh, in these areas uh, so for me that's very interesting from an outsider and I, and I think that's the message I'm trying to I want to show that, Is that it? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, more questions I guess that's uh, so sorry. oh sorry uh, I, I think I missed that did, uh, how did you get into the NGO how, how did it start yeah, um, there's this amazing girl in Hong Kong called Bridget and uh, I said to her she's the next model I said Bridget I've got very few girls on my website can I photograph you and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she said yeah she's sure she's a pen up. no she's she's a lawyer like you I'm no, not no, a lawyer sorry yeah. you're my man but no he's uh, she uh, okay. she was the next model oh okay and she's a very strong character and she said well why don't you come to Mongolia and photograph me there because I work for Alan Linklater the, the lawyer firm oh. and sh they are closely linked to the, 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 NGO. the, the NGO so I thought brilliant and she was she was my golden goose really I mean she's the one that started it all so I then she said look jump in a taxi and go go and do whatever you want to do and then after a week of um, drinking vodka every day and living in you know just trying just trying it out then came back with some images did you actually have a, a, a job before with any sort of like Going on at the same time to subsidize me? When or? you start, are you actually. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to phrase it properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, were you a photographer for a living at the same time when you asked the girl that you. Um, for a living is. Because uh, I'm lucky to have a partner that keeps me alive in. in, in in Hong Kong because otherwise I would be doing weddings food photography all the things which for me are, are passion killers I mean because I've done in, in in the UK I was a soldier I was a farmer I was a plumber for nine years uh, building I, I mean I did five different careers and but photography was always in the background this kind of passion so when I moved with my partner to Hong Kong uh, he keeps me alive basically so I'm able to do photographs which uh, I really want to do so I'm, I'm very very privileged to be able to, to go I mean I do make some money <laughs> but not much so I mean I, I have a studio I do portraits and uh, and the odd job here and there so but yeah, yeah it's I, not I, I really like the NGO stuff I mean I go to you know go travel my own as well yeah but sometimes I mean back to the reality you're talking about money right exactly so when yeah. you do NGO uh, they it cover my costs. So in, in um, it's interesting. I run the Mongolian. I have to be nice. Well, I am going to be nice because it's true. <laughs> the NGO they they treat me really, really, really well. So I mean, they will cover my costs and everything, and they will the the money we make from the images, we will we will get back. Uh, Hagar was the same in Cambodia. Same thing. It's you have to just go by cost. Really, that's how I do it. I mean, there are people who will and that's probably what I should be doing is you should say for especially for some of the bigger NGOs say look I this 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 and this, this is but it's very difficult because NGOs I mean I know they run as a business as they should do all NGOs it has to be a business it's reality but uh, yeah I, I, I mean for me I'm just in a very privileged position to to be able to 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 have a partner that enables me to do this kind of thing so oh, sorry. <laughs> I know there's a lot of different type of NGOs, <coughs> yeah. and there's some are actually 
Fake? Not. Oh. Uh, Which is a mess. A lot of money is not actually going to the purpose of yeah. what it, it should be. Yeah. So they give some, of course, you know, yeah, yeah. to show. But at the same time, maybe the, the big majority of money that they earn from volunteer are not. How can you justify which NGO That's you typical. I don't know. Maybe Alex can answer that question because he's done it for long. But uh, I mean, I was just lucky. It's always, I, I never. <laughs> think too hard about how I get things I just kind of fall into it so I would just meet someone who says oh I know this person who does this and this and then so I said great I'll do it so I just rely on chance I mean but I'm, I've only worked with three NGOs now and, and one in Hong Kong actually and it's all been friend based so maybe that's the best way of doing it is is word of mouth I think just my friend works for this they had a really good experience and then I would I would work on that actually in fact, somebody was asking me tonight about how do you work for NGOs to send out your CV and say, this is, this is my skill, can you, uh, I'm a lawyer, I can do this, this and this, and then see what they say and just send out your CV. I mean, Cambodia is NGO yeah. capital. <laughs> Phnom Penh is full of, full of women in comfortable shoes, <laughs> all eating quinoa, and it's just like a really, uh, it's, I mean, this, it's amazing. Well, Cambodia is a very broken country, as you know. It's, it's, got one of the worst histories ever. I mean, we have a whole third of the population, adult population, intelligent population, just wiped out. I mean, it's, they started, with they, I mean, they were coming, coming back from nothing. So, uh, that's, Cambodia is a good start. Yeah. <laughs> I would try there. And, and Hong Kong too. I, I was amazed. There are many, many refugees in Hong Kong. I had no idea, actually. I worked for a, a one NGO here and they, they go around and they repair uh, properties so, so say oh your, your house is in complete disrepair we're going to go and paint it and make it look nice for you again but ironically in Hong Kong a lot of the people say oh no no don't paint my house because if you painted my landlord will put the rent up so it's just a kind of this whole it's, it's a very messy situation in Hong Kong but it, it it really does exist I mean it's just more hidden I think in Hong Kong uh. okay thank you Paul um, <laughs> Oh, oh sure, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned like when you're taking photos, do you, you, do you kind of give them uh, instructions about how to pose for photos and stuff? Like, I mean, that's fine, but you know, what is your personal boundary saying that this is a staging and it's not acceptable for a documentary photography? Oh yeah, I mean, if it's documentary, then you shouldn't really. I mean, th yeah. this this place here, I I, I wouldn't mess around with them. I mean, you can a little bit. I think it's yeah. it's not. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's yeah. if you're looking because documentary is all about you're a witness to an occasion. Right. right? So if I was to look at that same photograph in 50 years time and go, what was happening? Um, the fact that I'm, that I maybe moved a fan or something like that just to make it look pretty, I think wouldn't change the, the, the honesty or the integrity right. of the photograph. But if I was to, <laughs> to throw, I don't know, some bullets or something on the floor just to make it look more wild, then, then that's yeah. cheating. That's wrong. So we're coming back to your purpose. Of, you know, yeah, I think so. I yeah, see. I think. Yeah, I mean, integrity in photography is is, is, is good. I'm because I'm kind of in this border between documentary and do you call it fine art, where you just want to see something beautiful. Right. I mean, it doesn't. It's not. I'm not strictly saying oh, this is Chairman Ma standing no, at the. They're not mutually exclusive. Uh, yeah, I mean, they can be coexist. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Salgado was criticised for taking beautiful pictures of African boys starving and he turned around and said well if I didn't make them beautiful then nobody would look at them so he's kind of a you have to the images have to be impactful and beautiful for, for people to sit up and think okay I'm gonna buy yeah okay, sorry, one more. <laughs> you, it you. might be irrelevant but how do you see Hong Kong how do you feel about Hong Kong do you see it as a stepping stone of yours or do you see it as uh, more in what sense yeah, how do you, how, how does Hong Kong uh, impact your life? <laughs> 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 I fucking love it. <laughs> I love Hong Kong. Hong Kong's amazing. It's a gateway to the rest of Asia. And uh, yeah, I mean, I love Cantonese people as well because they are used to us Guaylos being around and we have a big history and we all mix and there isn't this kind of, or well, I don't feel it, this kind of imbalance. I do feel like a people so this is white people so what this I mean uh, there is a I think people will get on here 
Uh, I mean, opportunity-wise, do it come oh, to the UK or maybe your hometown? Is it more? Oh, uh, because I'm not so commercial, it's, it's yeah. I can't really give you a good answer. I think, from what I heard, it's not as strong as maybe being in the UK or something. Mm. I think the opportunities are maybe not as as big. But uh, I, I I would say that. But then Hong Kong is maybe a bit smaller. I mean, especially in fashion. I don't know. You want to look fashion? I mean, you want fashion? <laughs> no. The opposite of it. <laughs> <laughs> but so I, I wouldn't know. I mean, I what can't. Would I don't that know. Be? <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's it's strong. I I just I would hesitate to say maybe not like New York or, mm. or London or. Mm. I think we have uh, one more question. Okay. Yeah. What's the picture of Bern and your retina that you didn't take? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see it every day. <laughs> you didn't take it. Oh. Um, where? Like anywhere? Anywhere. There must be pictures you go, I oh, wish I'd got that moment, but I didn't think it. And one string springs to mind because when I when I go to Mongolia, I'm instantly thinking, right, I've got ten days, and I've got to come back with two. So I'm always thinking, I've got to have my camera on me and it's ready. So I remember landing at Genghis Khan Airport, and we were in a taxi, and my camera bag it's, it's all locked down there, and I'm driving along, and then we see down there was this wedding going on with all these Mongolia Ulamata had these huge external pipes. It's uh, they're carrying because it gets so cold. These pipes carry water like a huge radiator around being driven by these huge uh, industrial uh, coal burning things to move this water because they don't have to warm it in order to move it otherwise if they if they stop cooking it doesn't move so you've got these very ugly communist looking yeah. pipes everywhere and there was this wedding going on inside this and I remember looking at it thinking oh shit 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 where's my camera and it was like an instant message to go be ready be ready always 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 be ready because even if you're asking instructions or like we'd be sitting there in the car and we've been driving the distances we spent like 10 hours in a car and, and everybody's drinking and singing in the back and i'm thinking oh god i still haven't got my picture yet and then you stop and then the window winds down and there's this there's, there's this incredible looking guy with a cigarette hanging out his mouth thinking, oh shit i you need to you've got to be you've got to yeah. constantly thinking in the back of your head that where is it where is it where is it? so you become like a hawk and I'd have to tell the driver, stop, stop, stop. And then the vehicle would drive and we'd say, go up there, there's a man on a horse, let's go and try it. Let's see what happens. So you have to really take your opportunities. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the one I missed, maybe the, the wedding going on amongst the pipes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's an oriented question. Uh, can you tell us about your Red Hero collection? Uh, oh, um, okay. So I had, I had three auctions at Key Club, and uh, there's Red Hero one, two, and three. And the Red Hero collection is a. Uh, I've taken, I think there are fifteen or sixteen, of my of my favorite photographs from all those, and I'm selling them. So, if anybody <laughs> wants to uh, buy one of my pictures, I, I for the first time I take a small little percentage out of it I think it's a third or a quarter or something and but a huge chunk goes to picture goes NGO. direct to the NGO this, I, I will say this is amazing so you've got 50 60 kids at this charity there are six people there's there's a cook there's a, a, a doctor and uh, a three driver. people oh yeah there's a driver bodyguard How do you know? oh no no that's mine oh. <laughs> no there's and there's three other people who are working they're constantly looking after the kids so that they're teaching mm. when the kids sleep and all that and it it costs uh, 50,000 US a year to look after 60 kids which is actually very very cheap it's nothing in Hong Kong that would I mean somebody could have a dinner for that for some of these crazy restaurants it's really 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 cheap to to look after these kids so you've got this drunken woman with these two kids who've been going to the charity for four years it just shows you how important it is because uh, at minus 15 and at minus 40 in one of the most polluted what is the most polluted capital city in the world those they I mean the government is not looking out for them there is there isn't the money for them so it just shows you how important as small as the charity is it's extremely important so uh, yeah I think it's yeah thank you for, for raising that because uh, that's another reason why I'm doing this talk. Is it's not just about me and blah blah blah. It, it's it's my my passion for the for the charity. Okay. Thank you, Paul.
Anything else? Uh, no, thank you for coming. That's good. I started off a bit nervous. I think I got there in the end. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you.